Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told out of voice of radio. So today, we need to take a look at Rillaboom V. And like a bunch of cards lately, we've actually got an English version of it. So none of this translation malarkey needed, ladies and gentlemen. We're good to go. Now, you can already see from the picture here, it is clearly a promo. It's coming out in tins. Is it the same one that is going to be in V Max Rising, the Japanese site I showed you the other day, which will be part of our Sun and Moon 2 set, most likely? Huh? Maybe. We don't really know, ladies and gentlemen. They are coming out on the 27th of February, if I know that correctly. And shout out to the lovely Matthew you've arrived at Immunity for hooking us up with the images and the release date information. And we'll start off having a look at Rillaboom here, because the Rillaboom looks really, really fun. Now, a giant point which we wanted to know since we first saw Pokemon V, they are all basics. If we have a look at Rillaboom here, we can see very, very clearly that Rillaboom is a basic Pokemon as a Pokemon V, despite being a stage 2 Pokemon in the game. And we have actually seen a couple of Rillaboom cards already, one of which is extremely relevant, more on that in a moment. And they are stage 2s. Well, as it stands, ladies and gentlemen, all Pokemon V are basic. We know that in VMAX Rising, we're going to be getting VMAX versions of Rillaboom, Cinderace, and Teleon. Now we have confirmation that the Vs themselves are basic. So think of them like the old EX Biggie Big X, where we could look at something like Venusaur, for instance. Might as well stick with Grass First Partner Pokemon, where even though it's a stage 2 in the video game, it is a basic in the card game. And this will now confirm for us that all Pokemon V moving forward will be basic Pokemon. So Rillaboom then, 220 HP is huge. The only Pokemon V we've seen so far that can beat that is Zamazenta, and that's only by 10. Retreat cost of 3 is super annoying because it means you don't have access to buff padding to further buff your HP. That's kind of annoying. And weakness to fire could really suck because of Welder. Now, to be fair, we've seen a bunch of decks lately playing weakness guard energy to get around decks like Welder. So it's not the end of the world, but it is very much worth bearing in mind that, um, yeah, this could be a bad weakness. Mew to a Mew is a great deck. And that plays Welder, so you can easily play Fire Pokemon. They're playing Fire Energy. Reshiram and Charizard, still a very good deck. Blacephalon, still seeing a bit of play. It's a fairly bad weakness to have, if I'm honest with you. Being a Grass Pokemon means that if you're not one-hit KO'd, you are then actually got a lot of healing. Things like Life Forest Prison Star, things like the Shaman from Lost Thunder, and things of that nature. Gardenia. There we go. Gardenia. Big Pokemon, capable of tanking, but the bad weakness could come back to haunt it. But what does it actually do? Well, the first attack for one Grass Energy, search your deck for up to two basic Grass Pokemon and put them onto your bench. Now, I like this attack on a basic Pokemon, but I like it on a single prize basic Pokemon, and the Pokemon give up two prizes. This makes me sad, ladies and gentlemen. This makes me sad. You see, it's a lot that you're potentially giving up here. It is not worth giving up two prizes to get a bunch of Pokemon out. It's just not. The good news is, once you get them out there, they're on your bench. So they are available to evolve from the next turn, which is lovely. But if your opponent comes and KOs you, they're taking two prizes. And you've got 220 HP, so it's not going to be the easiest KO ever. But again... They can KO you, and if they do, you're giving up two prizes. This would be a perfect candidate for Island Challenge Amulet, the card which reduces your HP by 100, but means you give up one less prize when KO'd by damage from your opponent's attack. The problem is that card is for EX and GX Pokemon. It doesn't work for Pokemon V. If you're desperate, fine, but this is not an exciting attack. But 4 energy, 220 damage. Oh my goodness, that. 
That is an exciting attack. And this one I like very, very much indeed. Because remember how I told you that the only Pokemon V with more than 220 HP is Zamazenta? And that's only 10 more? Yeah. Rillaboom does 220 damage and gets a one-hit KO. Now, you do do 30 damage to yourself, which is slightly upsetting, but there's plenty of Pokemon V out there like Celebi, for instance, the other grass one we've seen, and Celebi has 180. So even after doing 30 damage to yourself, you've still got more than Celebi, this is where your HP comes in very, very handy. And of course, all of your healing could come in quite nicely here as well. It's a good attack. The doing 30 to yourself isn't ideal, but this really is one of those attacks where you go, look, I'm getting a KO. I am taking two or more prizes with this attack, so I don't really care. I mean, something like, I mean, let's take Stone Journal, which is actually already proving to be a really good Pokemon. Stone Journer has 220 HP. Now, it's weak to grass, but even if they take away their weakness, you're getting a one-hit KO. But there is a V-Max for Stone Journer that gives up three prizes, which has a monstrous 330 HP, but you're getting a one-hit KO on them because of weakness. Anytime you're hitting for weakness, you're good. Any non-GX, you're getting a KO on here. I mean, even something like Wailord that comes in with a ridiculous 220 HP, you're getting a KO. To be fair, Wailord is actually weak, but even if they weren't weak, you would still be getting a one-hit KO. And even something like Zamazenta, I showed you Vitality Ban the other day, that is a new Pokemon tool that lets you do an extra 10 damage. Oh, look. Now you are getting that one-hit KO on Zamazenta. In terms of Pokemon GXs, you're getting all the basics. Even the really big boys like Wishy Washy going down in one hit. Although, to be fair, Wishy Washy also weak. Do remember that water Pokemon are changing their weakness with Sun and Moon. Um, take something like Lapras V, for instance. They're going to a lightning weakness. Now, to be fair, Lapras V, you're still getting a one-hit KO. But unfortunately, Lapras V Max, you will not be because they're weak to lightning. They're not weak to water. The point is, you're getting a huge amount of KOs here. Oh, no, wait. No, I lied to you. Wishy Washy is one of the few that was weak to lightning last time round in the Sun and Moon era. My apologies. Now, in terms of stage one GXs, you're getting them as well. Something like Naganadal, something like Alolan Ninetales. They just go down here. You're not getting stage 2 GXs, but they're not seeing play at the moment, so do we care? And the one thing you are missing is VMAX that aren't weak, like the aforementioned Lapras, and Tag Team Pokemon. Even the weaker ones like Pikachu and Zekrom that come in at 240, even with a Vitality Band, you'll be 10 damage short. So that's a little bit upsetting. The thing is, you can use Shrine of Punishment and it will hit them, not you. It doesn't work for V Maxes, but it will work for Tag Team Pokemon. Now, we've actually gotten this far in the video, and I haven't even mentioned the energy cost. We've got the other Rillaboom. Now, the Rillaboom from the V deck's got 190 HP and can do 180 damage, fine. But the Rillaboom from the set has an ability that lets you attach two grass energy from your deck to one of your Pokemon. You don't have to have them in hand. You can attach them from your deck. So the energy cost here, we don't care. I mean, if you're behind on prizes, you can just go count again, energy, voltage beat, boom. You're off and rolling. You can do the little trick I'm so fond of and play a couple of lightning energy and use Tapu Koko plus Rillaboom and your attachment for the turn. If it was free energy, it would be slightly easier because you could use voltage beat and your attachment for the turn. But make no mistake about it, this is not a particularly difficult attack cost to pay. When we saw the Rillaboom from the V-Dex and we saw that it was a 4 energy attack, we went, well, that's a bit awkward. But now that we can see Rillaboom from Sword and Shield, we go, well, cool. Outside of a Rillaboom deck, my excitement for Woodhammer goes away. Not entirely, but it gets significantly more muted. 
But if you've got energy acceleration, you're pretty good. And let's face it, right? If you're playing a Rillaboom deck, you want an attacker. Preferably a basic attacker. Rillaboom is very, very much like Vikavolt. In that you search your deck for two energy and attach them with a stage two Pokemon. And time was you would use Tapu Bulu GX. And then we moved on to Rayquaza GX. And they were the two partners we had for Vikavolt. Well, if we look at Tapu Bulu here, Rillaboom is better than Tapu Bulu. Tapu Bulu really came out at 180 damage, Rillaboom does 220, and you've got an extra 40 HP. Now, to be fair, it is for one more energy than Tapu Bulu, but Tapu Bulu, you had to discard all the energy to do 180, you do 220, and even with the self-damage, you've still got more HP than Tapu Bulu. If we take a look at something like Rayquaza, I mean, for four energy, Rayquaza's doing... 120 damage. And you need to mix lightning and grass, so that wasn't a huge issue with Vikavolt. And Rayquaza could get up to more damage than Rillaboom, but in order to do 240, you needed 8 energy. Now, that was all of your Pokemon. It didn't all have to be on Rayquaza. But my point is, Rillaboom, Rillaboom V, looks like a more efficient, harder-hitting deck than Vikavolt with either Tapu Bulu or Rayquaza, until you got a huge amount of energy down. So I'm giving Rillaboom four Wossies. I think if you're not playing it in a Rillaboom deck, it's not a particularly good card. But Vikavolt was a good deck, so surely Rillaboom can also be a good deck. And we didn't have as good a partner for Rillaboom until Rillaboom V was revealed, and now we do. I love it. But I'd like to know what you think, so let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio where you can do exactly that. And please do take a moment to go and take a gander at youtube.com slash plays, where we talk about a whole bunch of games that don't have Pokemon in, but are an awful lot of fun. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would you? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.